Okay, getting prepared for the part B of the exam. If you're going to do some self-studying or even if you're going to take the seminar, it's best to be prepared when you go in in case you need to ask a few questions. But if you're going to study on your own, these are some real good books from Baseline Data. And I'm going to put a link below in my description if I remember. But this right here, this book right here, the Specification B, Plastic Replicals and Tools. So you would need a set of replicable tools to do these, to answer these questions. So, but to understand the book of specs and the book of exhibits, this right here book is great. And also this right here is your book of exhibits right here. So I'm gonna go through it and answer a few questions, maybe five or six questions. And I'm gonna show you how to move around in your book of specs right here this is your book of specs and also your book of exhibit uh, of exhibits because you're gonna have to use both of these books to take the part B and when you sign up for the test AWS is gonna send you the book of specs but they're not gonna give you the book of exhibits so you can purchase this from baseline data I see a price here I don't know if that's the true price or not but you can look in the link so let's go through here and answer a few of these questions and we're going to need both of these books to answer that. So let's just look right here. And this on this first page, it just give you some information. The new specification B has added a new book of exhibits for the student to use when taking the AWS specification B examination. This flashcard book, along with the new book of exhibits, will prepare you for the large part of the new specification B examination. It would give you examples of the completed WPS, PQRs, and WP, WQTRs, and PWHTs, charts, NDT methods, and discontinuities. You will find some mistakes on many of these WPS, PQRs, and WQTR documents. These mistakes were intentionally placed there for you to get the documents that you cannot verify out of the book of specs, part B. For example, there is an AWS A5.18 where A numbers are listed. These cannot be verified unless you have the chemical makeup of the filament. Assume th those things that you cannot verify to be correct unless otherwise stated. Let's go through this. The student must wake up their brain and once again learn to read, reason, and process information for the purpose of being able to find the correct answer. These flashcards would absolutely help you get back into the habit of learning. They allow the students to use their time efficiently by giving them an opportunity to study when they have a few minutes. There is never an easy path to success, but rather a progression of learning every day. Don't be lazy, work hard, and you will be successful. And I'm going to go through a few of these questions and uh, show you how this works. Okay, this first question right here in this book. It says, what direction should the grinding preparation be prepared in relationship to the bin specimen? And the answer is parallel. And I'm going to show you, and it also tells you on the back of this how to find it. Right here, you look in your book of spec, you go to annex number four, footnote number three. So that annex number four, footnote number three, we'll move this out of the way. We'll have to go to our book of specs. And that'll be on page 41. So you scroll through and go to page 41. And you look at your footnote, your footnote number three. It says the specimen grinding direction should be parallel to the direction of a bin. So that's how you find that answer. Okay, let's do a number two. Number two, if the information for provided for in space 22 correct on the WPS GTAW 3000-1, look at exhibit 1A. So we go into your book of exhibits, we move this out the way, we find 1A. I'm 
Okay, 1A, and we look at space 22. So space right here, we go across space 22. And it says AWS specification number is 5.18. So the answer will be B on here. It says yes, the AWS specification is correct, but it's unable to be verified in the book of specs. So how will we know that? So we'll go in the book of specs, we'll turn to page 33. Book of specs, page 33. And we look at this. And we know that that rod that we're using in exhibit 1A would be a would be a ER 70S-2. So that's an electro rod 70S-2. So we'll look into this. And on page 33 in your book of specs. And you notice that the ER, if you look through here, you don't see a ER 70S dash anything. And like they said, the book of spec is not a real code, it's just a malt code. So then you go back down here, and we know if you study your AWS, uh, that's why I say study your part A first. Learn all you need to know. And you, you'll know that an ER 70S dash 6 or dash 2 is in AWS specification A5.18. This is a 5.18, it says all classifications. So that answer would be B. So that's how you move around in this book. So let's go to question three. In question three, it says, is the tensile strength acceptable on the procedure qualification records on PQR shielded metal art welding 4000-1 exhibit 2C? for tensile worn. If this information is used for a welding procedure specification test for A516-70 material. So we'll look at it, go to your book of exhibits and look at exhibit 2C. So this is 2A, we're gonna find 2C. So this is exhibit 2C. So we're looking at the first tensile, which is right here. And we go across, and we notice that the ultimate tensile strength failed at 66,562. And the rod we're using up here is a 7018MH4R. So we know that the 7018, the ultimate, the minimum tensile strength is 70,000 pounds per square inch. So to find that answer, what you want to do, we're going to turn this page. Question number three, the answer is yes, because the specimen failed in the base material, you are allowed 5% below the requirement. How do they know that? To find that, you go to your book of spec, uh, paragraph 5.4.3.3. So we move this and we go to our book of specs. And it's on page 23 in paragraph 5.4.3.3. So it tells you right there you allow 5%. So 5% we'll do it here on our calculator. So we said it failed. It's a 70,000, seven, zero, minus 5% equals. So there you go. It's the minimum it could be is 66,500, but it failed and it failed at 66,562. So if it would have failed 63 uh, less, it would have been out. So that's how you find the answer to number three. Okay, let's look at number four. 
here. Uh, number four. It says in in the welder qualification test re record for WPS Shielded Metal Art Welding 4001 Exhibit 2D, what information should be placed into the space in number 19? So now you're going to look at the book of exhibits 2D, which is right here. This is your book of exhibit. And they look in for records that is in space 19. So space 19 is right here. So if you go across it, this right here, this space says AWS filler, AWS filler metal or electro specifications. You look at that, I know that's wrong. So we're looking at a specification number. And I know the specification number for that electro. Here's the electro. It's 7018. And I know from experience, uh, you can look at that. Um, and to find that answer, you can really look in the book of specs, page 44 and 45. So if we turn this, the answer is A5.1. And this tells you, hey, it's in Annex 2. So Annex 2 is on page 33. So we're looking at a E7018. That's this one right here, line number 4. So we know that it's A5.1. Because you're looking at the E7015, you got a 5, 6, and 8. I know that these numbers ending in 5, 6, and 8 are low hydrogen electrodes. And there you go. The answer will be A5.1. So that's how you find the answer. Let's look at another one. Let's look at question number four. Uh, question number four. It said a test was performed for procedure qualification and the width of the specimen was 0 0.950 wide and 0 0.505 thickness. If it was placed in a tensile machine and failed at 37,500 PSI, what is the ultimate tensile strength for the specimen? So how do you find a tensile strength of a square specimen? So you go width times uh, thickness, width times thickness. So if you multiply those two together, you come up with 0 0.5. 47975 so you take you take 300 I mean 37500 divided by and round it to 0.48 you come up with 78125 so we know that the answer is D but you also have to convert this pounds per square inch into megapascals so to convert that into megapascals, now you want to go to table 16 in your book of specs. In your book of specs, table 16, pounds per square inch to megapascals. So you see pounds per square inch to megapascals. You take your 78,125 and multiply it by 0 0.00689. And the answer you come up with is C. It's 538.3 megapascals. So the answer would be C and D. So be careful. Know your conversions. So you wouldn't even have to go back to table 16 if you already remember that conversion. You need to know that if you're going to take the test, even if you know it for that one day on test testing, because you can waste too much time looking up answers when you can you know the formula, you know millimeters to inches, you know your heat input, you know your pounds per square inch to megapascals and vice versa. You need to know those things so you won't be wasting time because you have two hours to take that test. You don't want to use all two hours to take the test. You put yourself under a lot of pressure. Let's look at another question. The question's like this. I'm going to read it to you. A welder performance qualification is being conducted on a four inch piece of pipe. How wide should a phase bend specimen be? And you shouldn't have to go to the book of specs to find that answer. You know the answer is one inch. If you study your book of specs, but if you want to, you can go to uh, this question number six. You can go to page 44, uh, 41, I'm sorry. Just look up here. It tells you right here, your, your width and 
you just go down here and it'll tell you all the information you need. You know that your, your width is going to be one inch right here. So it's going to be one inch. So things like that, just, just answer the question. Don't go up trying to look for the answer. Just like this one also, the next question. It says on a guided bend test, how much radius must the corners in the bend be prepared? The answer is one eighth. It's on that same page, page 41. You got one eighth of an inch if you look right here. So you want the radius. So questions like that, do not waste your time. Do not waste your time. Even questions like this, you don't have to look in your book of specs, but it's a weld is being used, is being made using cellulose rod by the shielded metal art welding process. What electrodes are considered cellulose? We know what metals, what rods are used to be considered low hydrogen. They end in five, six, and eight. So we see five, we know those two are not the answer. The 70, 15, and 8018. So the answer would be your 70, 10, and your uh, 90, 10. And if you won't, if you don't believe that, just go to your uh, book of specs and it, it'll tell you. So I'm gonna do one more question for you. And all of this stuff is, you don't even have to look through it, but let's go to question uh, number 14. Let's look at this. The soak temperature or hole temperature is at B and C. On the exhibit for post well heat treatment chart, what is the temperature? And the answer is B and C. And I'm gonna show you how they got that. So we don't wanna look at our book of exhibits. Exhibit number four. So you're looking at B. You got B right here. So here go how you do this. We're gonna look at, it. we got B. So we know it's right at, you look over here, it's about 600, so you're looking at about 590. It's a little bit under. And you're looking at an average right here. Uh, we're looking at, if you look at this, that's between the eight, nine, so 850. And if you take those two and come up with an average, you come up with an average of 720. So 720. So there go your average 720. Now you want to convert that Celsius to Fahrenheit. So if you convert it to Celsius to Fahrenheit, it's a chart. The answer is going to be 1,328 degrees Fahrenheit. So the answer is B and C because 720 C equals 1,328 degrees Fahrenheit. And this right here tells you where to look at. You can look at table uh, 16 and 18 in your book of specs. And, and 16, table 16 and 18 in your book of specs. So if this video helps, subscribe to my channel. Also look out for other videos of quizzes and stuff that I would be adding to my quizzes. Also, I'll be adding it also to my Patreon. So if you want to become a member of my Patreon account, look in the description below and you can take parts A, B, and C practice exams uh, as many times as you want. Don't forget to subscribe, like, turn on your notifications, and share this video. Also leave comments. Thanks for watching. Welding and stuff.